Ciao YouTube. Today I would like to talk about something that I started introducing in a different video, which is being a pro. Um, someone asked me, you know, why don't most aim trainers become pros? And I started explaining that there's a lot more to being a pro than, you know, being an aim god. So um, I want to explain how I would go for becoming a pro in 2024 if I was still interested in it. First of all, I think you should ask yourself, is this something that actually matters to me? Is this valuable to me? Um, does it align with my values and goals in life and the direction I want to take? Uh, because being a pro uh, in video games is a lot. It is kind of a pain in the ass, I'll be honest with you. Uh, first of all, you should ask yourself, what is driving me to even think about becoming a pro? Do I realize that I enjoy the competition to that level? Do I crave the adrenaline of being on stage? Do I uh, really need some outlet for my competition? And have I found that, that gaming really scratches the need? And do I even have the need? Because, you know, I, th that's what I was doing it for. Like, I, I really crave competition. Um, and there are many ways to, you know, kind of have uh, an outlet for competition. And, and competitive gaming for me was a great one. The adrenaline of a clutch and, and being on stage and the screaming and the energy is something that I found very addictive. And I absolutely love doing it. Um, so if that's something that you crave, I think that's a good motivation. But then I would ask myself, am I sure that I'm not doing this because I think it will make me rich? Because I think that is not the right way of doing it. Um, if your main goal is becoming rich, like, is being a competitive gamer really the way you want to do it? First of all, the likelihood of you becoming rich is extremely low. Uh, the money is very skewed in the world of competitive gaming. It's mostly at the top. So you might hear about these, like, insanely high salaries, you know, people making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. It's a very small percentage of people that are salaried in general, you know. Like, if you're European and you want to start now in Valorant, like, I still know what the salaries are like. You know, you're going to start, like, 500 bucks a month, maybe a 1,000. You know, if you're starting to be close to Tier 2, maybe you can get to 1.5. Like, this is, this is not you getting rich. Like, yes, it's you living um, from your passion, like, which is great. But if you were passionate about it because you wanted to become rich, you would just be unhappy about it. And there's a good chance that you might, even if you do make it to that level, which is already the very top of players, there's a good chance that you will stay stuck there. Um, sometimes for reasons that have nothing to do with you. So ask yourself, am I doing this because I have been sold this idea of a life that is extremely pleasant and I'm rich by being extremely skillful at video games? Because then ask yourself, should I not maybe try to do something else to become rich? You know, there are ways that I think are much higher likelihood to make you rich, like studying, stay in school, make sure that you get a, a good degree in something that um, typically gets you a high paying job and then try to be very good at that. And, you know, be kind of smart with your money, invest in S&P 500, don't spend on, on weird stuff and you will probably become rich kind of young. The likelihood of that is a lot higher than you making it as a professional in your game. So, again, ask yourself, am I doing it for the right reasons? Am I finding that I'm really talented or that I really enjoy the process of improvement? Because I do, I am someone that kind of subscribes to the idea that hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And I think most people don't work hard. So I think if you are a hard worker, you already have a good chance of making it. And, you know, you can be a pro in many different creative ways. I will focus on tactical shooters mostly because I know more about them. But, you know, you've got people that became pros and known for their high IQ clutches. I remember Xipnix, a um, Danish player in Counter-Strike, was very famous for winning most of his clutches. And then you've got, like, Scream, people that are very famous for being mechanically talented, extremely talented in-game leaders, you know? There are different ways in which you can be creative and become a pro if you like working hard. But you really have to be honest with yourself and do some introspection and understand, do I like working hard like that? Do I like just practicing for hours on end without seeing any type of, of improvement, plateauing for weeks, even months, and still push through? Do I have it in me? Uh, because if you don't, then unless, again, you're an 
incredible talent and you realize that you know with 10x fewer hours in in whatever game compared to others you can still uh, perform i wouldn't i wouldn't honestly do it so that's that's number one again make sure that you're doing it for the right reason and that you're sure that this is what you want to do now number two um, if you do understand that yes if you if you really believe that it's your calling and you want to do it ooh, ferrari nice um, sorry, I get really distracted by good cars. Um, so if you really understand and you, and you believe that it's your calling and that's what you want to do, let's act now actually focus on how I think you should do it. All right. First of all, pick a game that is not too dead. I am someone that strongly believes in following your passion. But if your passion is a dead game and your goal is to become a pro, the market isn't there right you just won't be able to do it um, so maybe pick a game that isn't dead okay at this point I would say the games are Counter-Strike, Valorant, Fortnite, Apex, Rainbow Six Siege there's probably a couple more smaller ones where you could do something uh, but those are probably the main ones that I would pick. I hope I didn't forget any major one or people will be like, well, how did you not mention this game? Well, I'm sorry, you know, but these are the main ones in my opinion. So once you pick a game that you like, kind of try them all, see if you can find parts of the game that you really enjoy. Now starts the grind. The grind is multifaceted because yes, there's the mechanical portion of it. Obviously, you know, I've talked about aim training and why it's important in other videos. So I would focus on aim as, as part of it one of the things that i would do is definitely focus on aim um, and then one more thing that i would definitely do is uh, focus on the other pillars as well you cannot you don't want to be someone that is like one directional you don't want to put all your stats in a single all your points in a single stat in a in an mmorpg right you don't want to be all aim no brain you don't want to be all brain no aim so you kind of have to make sure that you work on everything the same way that if you're doing bodybuilding you will figure out your weakness and make sure that you don't have um that you don't have parts that are uh, a lot like overpowered by other things you want to make sure that if you're really good at aiming maybe you know for your hours that you're dedicating to training 100% aim training to like 50% aim training and 50% you know VOD review so the things that I would do for practicing are observe analyze and train um, observe yourself and observe others watching uh, the current esports like even if you don't enjoy them sorry let me just make sure that the mic is put in a better way Okay, so even if you don't enjoy it, because, you know, I, for example, didn't really enjoy watching esports much, but if you want to be an esports player, you need to understand the current meta, so you need to study to some degree. You need to learn what's going on, you need to really analyze, you know, watch a couple players, different uh, play styles, analyze them on a micro, stand, from a microscopic standpoint, figure out how they move, how they deal with information, so really take your time to figure out, like, okay, this player seems to be rotating or seems to be doing this thing or seems to be moving this way. Ask yourself, why are they doing it? You know, what happened that caused them to decide this? Because typically humans in a video game react to some external cue. It could be the timer, the timer hitting a specific time, a call from their teammate, a sound, some other event in the game happening, info, like whatever. Try to figure out why they're doing the thing they're doing and, and then really think about it deeply take notes i would highly suggest that you take notes and this might seem excessive but like do you want to be a pro or not and do you want to do it in your lifetime you have to be efficient i'm not saying that this is needed for you to become a pro i'm saying that if you want to maximize the chances of you getting pro you want to be taking it seriously and, and studying like this so observe yourself so do what reviews understand when you died or when when like you did something wrong what happened where did it go wrong what was the wrong decision you made and really um, do consistent water reviews if you see a pattern really in game try to focus on that maybe even think about like how can i put some visual cue that will remind me of the bad habit i have because everything is about habits okay so maybe you know if you really over peak all the time or maybe you get one kill and you get the like dopamine hit and need to really start um, going for multiple kills 
Do you really need to? Like, maybe you just did a kill that got you to be 4v3. Why are you still peeking, man? Like, bomb is down, you got 4v3, they're retaking and you're still peeking? Why? Because you want the dopamine? Not a good reason. So start noting it down, maybe put like even visual cues, you know, a post-it on your monitor or something that will prevent you from doing it again um, and, and really f analyze your bad habits because that will help. So that's the observe part, observe and learn, observe others, observe yourself. Then there's a train. So if you really figure out that your cross replacement is really bad, find a way to train. I'm not gonna plug aim labs, but we do have a specific cross replacement thing. But even in game, you know, if you really want to, you can hop on a private server and move around. You won't have any feedback from the game, um, but it's still better than not doing anything. So make sure that you also do that. Um, and so that's observe, that's learn. Then you've got train, you know, the repetition, really get the repetitions in. Even if you don't feel like playing a given day, hey, do you wanna be a pro or not? Discipline. Put in the hours, make sure that you're playing. And this is just for your microscopic level. This is you trying to improve yourself. Now there's the other portion of it. How's your mentality? How's your psychology? What are you as a teammate? Are you a good teammate or not? Um, are you being friendly and not tilting and being stable mentally with your, with your teammates? Have you found teammates? Have you found the right people? Have you had the courage to really uh, confront your teammates when they are um, stepping out of line? Have you made the hard decision to leave a team because it's unhealthy for you? Uh, so there's all of that, which starts being more macroscopic, you know, your decision making, not within the game, but outside of the game. And that's a big portion of becoming a pro. Are you making the right friends? Are you part of the right groups? Did you get invited to the right Discord? Um, are you starting to form some connections with orgs and people that work in orgs so that you have the right friends later on? to maybe start a project. All of this stuff is important and you know it requires a good degree of soft skills. Do you have these soft skills? If you don't, and again, this is your calling, are you ready to learn them? Are you ready to practice? Are you ready to put yourself in positions where you're very uncomfortable just for the sake of it? Um, because if not, again, consider whether you wanna be a pro or not. So uh, that's a macroscopic portion of it. So I would say, make sure that you're playing where the pros are if you're playing Counter-Strike and, you know, most of the pros are hanging out in high level face it, go play face it, get level 10 until you find a couple of pros. Make sure that you're consistent, be good, show off. So many pros, like the path to pro in Counter-Strike was really getting to FPL, right? Playing face it and getting to a high level and getting, then always being accused of cheating and then proving that you don't cheat, finding the right teammates, being tried out for teams. So go do all of that. Um, it will take time because if you're not very good, you won't, you won't get to FPL, you won't get to Radiant in Valorant and, and like constantly play against pros, right? You need to be very good. So this is the macroscopic portion of like, have a path that you're trying to achieve and often go back and reobserve how is it going. Like be honest with yourself. Am I being very slow? Am I plateauing? Am I plateauing because I really can't do it or is there something else to this? Have I not been putting in the work? Have I not been working uh, enough? Have I not been learning enough? Have I stopped doing VOD reviews? Something that I would consider, but this is kind of a little bit like, it takes money, right? So I wouldn't say it's controversial, but you might not have access to it. But coaches work for multiple reasons. I think it's the same reasons why coaches work in any other, you know, thing like personal trainers in the gym yeah they work not, not just because they might be more competent than you so they can point, point out things but also because a coach kind of has someone that holds you accountable you know you don't want to disappoint your coach humans don't want to disappoint other humans that expect something from them in general so a coach will help you because you know you know that you're going to talk to them and they will expect something maybe they told you to do something did you do that you don't want to be the one that's like oh well no so even just even if just for that a coach is valuable but if you find a good coach then they will also teach you a lot of things and they will be a lot more efficient at pointing out your bad habits so that you can immediately work on them so this is all about maximizing your efficiency because maybe even if you did nothing of what i said you could still become a pro just about like just from sheer amount of time that you put in do you really want to take 10 years to become a pro when you could take five? So um, really think about all of this uh, if you want to become a pro. Uh, then once you're a pro, there's the traveling portion of it. 
there is the prox every day. Your manager or your coach will schedule prox for at least six to eight hours a day. You have to be there on time, so be on time. You have to push through, you have to try new things, you have to be in the server with your, with your teammates uh, deciding new things to do, you have to do the meetings with the org and you have to do content because in 2024 you have to do some degree of content. The org will require that of you because they want to maximize their investment in you. So like be ready, don't be camera shy. If you are camera shy, practice that as well. Like being a pro has so many things that most people don't consider uh, that it's kind of a little bit funny to me. But still, I think it's a great job. Like if you can make it, I think it's amazing. Uh, just knowing that you're in the top percent of, of something, of some, you know, uh, metric in the world, knowing that you're one of the very best is one of the best feelings that a human can possibly feel. I strongly believe that. So um, these are my thoughts on how to become a pro. There's probably more to say on the topic, but I don't want to make a video too long. And yeah, do you still want to be a pro? Let me know. See ya.